Chambers. Now, as I recall, this was a match that happened earlier in Bracket, right? Um, yes, actually. I do believe Pokéline was able to take it over. Well, am I remembering this correctly? Yeah. yeah. Pokéline was able to be jumped. Oh, my. It makes I plenty that... of sense because from the matchup front, this matchup is nightmarish for Wii Fit Trainer. There's a lot of situations that just sort of go awry, be it the pocketed sun salutation acting as just a small nuclear explosion that Villager has on deck at any given point, or the ability to take the header away. Because unlike what we saw earlier where we could see two bonus fruits when Pac-Man's on the field, mm -hmm. there's only one header ball. Oh my, and such a dangerous position to be in. Neutral get up there can and will be a mistake one day because you know what Pokemon likes? Multi-jab on, onto Village Uchui. This is just a recipe for disaster on all fronts too because Numbers loves to play Wii Fit off the ledge, yep. like infamously so. And while he does it well and in fact is maintaining a lead here, it's going to be a dangerous situation to mm -hmm. sit in because Villager's at his strongest when he's able to control the ledge. Oh, for sure. And just putting John in such an uncomfortable position, they're able to get a beautiful whiff punish on the down out. And now, how is Pokelem going to be able to close out the stock? Good, good spacing on the Heru. Ended up only getting hit by the... Uh, Head of itself and Look not the, the bowling damage. ball. Oh, deep breathing boosting. Sun salutations are going to be nightmarish. Just deep breathing boosted normals are going to. Oh! That was really well played from numbers. You recognize that my ledge goal is long enough and quick enough to be able to get back while you're still stuck in all of that end lag from down B. Um, honestly, Pokelam just has to hit it once and, and just so you'd have forced the next option rather than going for the full tree hit. Oh, there we go. Just another grab, get some damage. A little bit of stage control. Now setting up the sapling. Going to be interacting with whatever hitbox number he's tried to throw out there. Uh, there it is again. It's like on paper, you've got that ledge play just fine. Just good luck executing against the likes mm -hmm. of numbers, who he owns like real estate on the ledge. Like this is just where he lives. Ooh, I like the idea from Pokelam. Uh, maybe trying to catch a drop shield from Numbers, but was not able to find it, and now just needs any way to be able to close out this stock. Numbers has been consistently rolling from the ledge, and honestly, when you're covering options at neutral get-up distance as Villager, you don't have a lot that can effectively also punish uh, Wii Fit's ledge goal. Because of just how long it is, because of how she low profiles, there isn't a lot that you can do in that position. Wow. Yeah, no, Numbers is playing this out fantastically. And that's not a lot of helium to those balloons. Forced to put his feet back on the ground and not able to do much with the ledge here. Oh, we're going to be here a bit. Yeah, and that's why. <laughs> uh, yeah, he can't get a little bit too comfortable with that. Really like using Lloyd um, as a shield. They're able to block out that sun salutation. Now Numbers looking for a way to catch that landing. Gets that first F tilt, but not able to fully follow through. Pokelam drifting out so well. You're just not able to effectively win the zoning war against uh, a player like Numbers. Mm -hmm. It's hard. So you have to really make him pay the price for going at the ledge. Yep. That's a good way to do it. Also, with pocketed full charge sun salutation, that's a potential early stock. Potential. Well, Almost. Love the really fact good that it had kills, folks. Uh, nonetheless. Ah, Pokelam had a good idea, but just a little bit too slow on the bowling ball there once again. Numbers is just playing this out so comfortably because Pokemon hasn't given him a reason to not play comfortably. Oh, such a good way to punish that missed header. John probably tried to go through a bit of a mix up there. F tilt hits under the ledge in a way that people just really don't expect it to. Tries to cover the ledge goal, but. <laughs> I did it. I got hit by that. Did you get hit by that? No. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> so, like. Doable? Oh. Uh... I mean, he's not dead yet. And I think that's one thing that needs to be said to any competitor is no matter how bleak the situation, you haven't lost until your opponent's on the windscreen. I like this idea from John, trying to go ahead and punish all of these Lloyds at mid-distance, but Pokelam spacing is impeccable, just constantly dodging these dash attacks. John is getting so hungry for them. Oh, buddy, oh, there's a lot happening. There it is. That's not boosted. That's not killing. Yep. Even at 180. 
Nope, that is his pocketed headache, but I like the fact that Pokelam quickly throws it away. Always make sure his pocket is fresh to come to grab the next option from John. So from John, he needs to be really patient and not throw out an early sun salutation because Villager can make better use out of it. Especially at these percentages now. Anything north of this point, like pocketed sun salutation is eradicating We Fit Trainer. Anything at this point can actually take the stock from Pokeland, but he's playing evasively so well. John, a little bit too hungry to be able to get this final. Oh, hit. you missed it up! Uh, and you get back aired, you explode, and we're going right into game two. Watch your God, Pokeland was so cool. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think about what could have gone better through Pokeland, though. Honestly, the beginning of the game needed to go better. Pokelam sort of found his footing. Also, yeah, no, uh, Wee Fit's really odd stature denies the yeah. um, the short axe. Yeah. Which, like, just big rip. That's, just big rip. Yeah, like, Wee Fit is a very unorthodox character mm -hmm. in design. That ends up helping her far more than hurting her. Those awkward poses end up being a blessing to her because she's just too leaf to be hit by stuff. Oh, I really like that cheeky bowling ball at the edge of Yoshi's story because now suddenly Pokelam can pressure low from the platform, which means he's also in a position to cover you high. Um, it's just like such a nasty place to be in at the same time. Pokelam not able to find that sapling. This is such a cheeky stage for this matchup. Both characters effectively have like a third of the stage at their control when they're approaching the ledge. Not even at the ledge itself, because once you reach that incline, you're effectively in the space that would be the ledge. Yeah. So Numbers doesn't even have to worry about being at the ledge to play his typical game plan. And likewise, Pokelam doesn't have to really worry about playing at the ledge or along the walls in this situation. Oh, that e Ooh. that pocketed header was excellent, but gonna be such an awkward trade for both of these players. Pokelam this time now falls into a traditional ledge option. Numbers keeps compensating and jumping back, maybe trying to catch Pokelam, pressing a button that he shouldn't. Sun Salutation not taking it quite yet, but the next one definitely will. Boosted forward tilt. Boosted forward tilt definitely gonna get it done. On such a small stage as well. Like, story invites such disastrous, like, ends of neutral. Because the platform layout is awkward in accordance to the base platform. The blast zones are just really close to the stage. <laughs> like, you just sort of explode. Mm -hmm. I think this was a phenomenal stage pick from Pokemon. And a really good way of just taking back some of the momentum. Oh my, and putting John in such a dangerous position, but the Heru hitting back on the Villager Balloons and right into Villager himself. I love this matchup. This, this is matchup great. This so janky. It favors Villager, but Numbers' playstyle really turns it on its head and forces Pokemon to be on his best mm -hmm. when it comes to what buttons he's pressed and what options he's using. I want to see Pokelam charge F-Smash a little bit because I feel like consistently he's been releasing it immediately. Numbers waits it out and is able to get a punish with Heru. Had Pokelam waited for that Heru, he might just be able to hit the Heru back at John and still get that hit, even if it won't kill immediately. Like, again, there it is, just not holding it, consistently getting called out by Heru. I think that's another one of those kind of situations where, like, you get away with that only once. So you got to make that count. We're on second stocks, and Pokelam has the lead. So I wouldn't be surprised to see such an option come out later because a lot of the ledge play has been very fast paced compared to the previous game. I like a lot of this Lloyd usage as well. Using positions where the numbers would normally go for um, a lot of Heru, a lot of Sun Salutation. Ooh, and catches that dash into the stage. Pokelim with a stock lead. This is where he plays patient. Can't really afford to advance past the tree. Can't really kill. You have to kill your own tree. Kind of rough. Good on Pokemon, not opting for anything silly. Just wait patiently while you've got yep. that lead. Like, oh, there it is. And now we're starting to see Pokemon diversify some of his options, not going for the second bowling ball. And honestly, what does he need to? That second bowling, bowling ball won't even hit. So he can just react and punish the next option. Ooh. Taking advantage of the fact that the tree extends uh, hitboxes once hit through it. Back here, eating Villager up. Yep. And now this game is so close. Ah, and John gets that beautiful punish on Lloyd. And when so slow, leaves Villager so vulnerable in ways that you don't expect him to. That time, gonna be respecting it. Maybe no out of shield option. 
trying to punish too fast. Number's very aware of the threat of bullying ball constantly and finding every which way to punish it. Mm -hmm. He's been neutral, oh, got up in properly that's as well. Shield. Oh my. If there was any time for numbers to start duking it out, it's right here and right now. I love that early dodge from Pokemon. He's like, hey, I don't want to press buttons on shield. He might be ready to parry this next button. Even neutral. <laughs> <laughs> God, the casual dude. walk up and shield. Like, I don't even think he needed to do it. He could have just... Okay, buddy. Okay. A friendly reminder that numbers does this on purpose and has fun playing video games. Oh, but that pocketed head is going to be able to get it back again. He waited for it. He was in the position to be able to get the punish too, and he did it. Oh wow. He gets that back. Oh, he's threatening so much space. The way that Pokemon is just using John's own heading against him, and another landing call out using up smash. Amazing stuff for Pokemon. Gonna be clutching out that game. Wow. That's such a goofy game too. I think. A lot of the reasons why these games are becoming so close, John kind of gets a little bit impatient towards the end. We saw this in the last game. Pokelam was trying to uh, catch a lot of John's dash attacks. He didn't get hit a single time, mind you. This time, John was jumping and he's like, hey, I need to get in there. I need to be able to find that kill. Uh, wait, yeah, yeah. is that the forehead touch? I think that was just him fixing his hair. That's the beginning of it. Also, by the way, I just, I just want... I, I, <laughs> I, I just want I want John to know that I really like his hair gel back. I think it looks great. Three, two, looks great. He's one, looking sharp today. Go. Handsome numbers. He came to play. Mm -hmm. Game three between these two in the run back. Um, there's just like so much counter play between the two and like just so much like development and how far this went. Numbers getting hit by the axe, but then not confirming into the tree itself. That's a bit of an interesting interaction. This is an interesting stage, I feel, for Game 3 because it's going to invite a lot of mix-up at the ledge from mm -hmm. where Numbers wants to go. Also, uh, like... What an F-tilt, because it hits under the stage as well. I love Ooh, Poke the stall with the headerless ball header? Okay. Pokelam's ledge mix-ups are becoming so good here, and there it is, the tree stopping Villager from going back a little bit too much, but unfortunately only hitting John's shield in that position. I like a lot of how Pokelam is diversifying his ledge trap options. He's opting to go for a lot more retreating uh, slingshot, and that is able to cover both neutral getup and goal. There you go. Yeah, no, this is just really comfortable play for Pokelam, it seems. And the platforms on Battlefield do give a lot of outs in case Villager needs an escape plan. But right now, Pokelam is playing really well when it comes to executing his own game plan, forcing Numbers to adapt. And Numbers is really good at it, especially with this stage, giving him a lot of opportunity mm -hmm. to change where he comes in when it comes to stage play, especially moving from ledge to ledge if put into that opportunity. Pokelam needs to watch out for some of these Lloyds at mid-range because that has been John's consistent in to be able to get in and to be able to find those punishes. Pokelam landing a little bit too aggressively though. It can be difficult to try to land aggressively on a character like Weefit because again, we talked about this earlier, the way that her hurtbox contorts under a lot of hitboxes, she's just able to low profile everything. Especially when you consider the aggressive options that Numbers goes for, typically. Like, the forward cell itself shrinks her down in, like, the weirdest of ways, making her very thin. Dash attack just makes her small. Just straight up, you're all of a sudden dealing with Pikachu-sized perk boxes. And again, Pokelamp not charging F-Smash at all, though. Um, just getting consistently called out and punished by Hedder. That's what he was looking for, but again, no punish. John, double goal for him, Ledge Numbers, this time. <laughs> I mean, it's working for him, and he's got the lead. Did you see how fast he dashed up to get that throw? Mm -hmm. Just able to catch Pokeland landing there. He waited out that hitbox. Oh, my. Yeah, Pokeland showing his hand a little bit too hard when it comes to his options at the ledge. And with numbers in the lead, he's got plenty of time to formulate game plans here. And Pokelam needs to close out the stock immediately, otherwise this game is just going to quickly run out of his control, but Numbers is going to be the first one to do it. And now he has an amazing lead, he has deep breathing on deck, and the longer this goes on, the more health he's going to get. But, get up attack there, a bit of a bait. If you do it a little too soon, you're going to interact with the water, you're going to be stuck in the animation, and then the tree hits you. So, you got to make sure to time that get up attack just right. Now Numbers with a pretty comfortable lead, he's got to figure out his aim so he can just keep that pressure on. 
He could just stay at the ledge, but the ledge is where Pokelam is able to fight back. So opting for playing beneath the plats, I think, is just really strong because he's able to take advantage of that speed to beat out uh, Villager's slower. That buttons. up smash was so smart, just in case. Pokelam landed aggressively there, finds that jab lock into the F tilt. Not really sure if any other option would have been able to connect there. So that was just optimal and well played. Ooh! There it is. There it is. Oh, not no. killing enough. No. I up thought that'd be the up smash. Just, it's just not strong enough. And forward smash isn't true. You gotta go for up smash, unfortunately. It does put Pokemon in a better situation percentage-wise. No! But that was the worst Lloyd you could have put out. How did that and hit And numbers him? knew it. It slipped right underneath. I want to take a look at that one more time. Yeah, you're gonna have to show it because that was the winning kill for numbers to take it over Pokelam. And I don't even think Pokelam had the gonk idea. Because... I mean, typically, using side B at the edge of the blast zone, as everybody knows, as Villager, it's an excellent way to stop your horizontal momentum um, immediately, right? So, no matter how much uh, drift you have, it'll stop. So, just taking a note, we see Villager's in, like, this space. Mm -hmm. Header can kind of cover into up here, if it's the yep. upwards angle. So, let's see how this goes. Let's just go through this frame by frame. So, Numbers hits the header. So it's coming along. Here, here. I want to see if it's gonna... actually going to be in that zoom-in frame, too. Oh, where I put the little bubble? Yeah, that might be. Oh, yeah, no, Villager, as he was falling down. Yep. I ended up getting hit by and it. you're in recovery frames during that point. You actually just can't do anything while you're waiting. Like, see, if you could kind oh, wait, if you could enhance. He's still got his arms up, so he's still... In the recovery frames of Lloyd. Yep. And then you just sort of explode. Yeah, that's unfortunate. That's just that's just like really specific <laughs> and small interactions. That was well spaced for numbers. It was more well timed uh, than anything else, because you're not hitting Lloyd mm -hmm. and it's right before Villager gets the opportunity to nair before he could pocket. Yep. Before he could 